Today I'd like to look at a relationship between the basic trigonometric function sine and cosine and the unit circle. Uh, this is such a close, tight relationship that sometimes sine and cosine are thought of directly in this context of the unit circle, whereas the introduction that I gave was with right triangles and opposite over hypotenuse and those sort of ratios. But it directly translates to a definition involving the unit circle, and this is a very impressive and useful definition, so let me show you what it is. So I just have a, a, a circle here. It's called a unit circle, which just means that the radius is 1, and I'm going to draw a right triangle, because when you think of sine and cosine, at least I personally immediately think of right triangles, because that's how they were introduced to me. So I'm going to draw a right triangle that connects a point on the circle, let's choose this one, to the origin, like so, and then drops down a, uh, a line there to make a right angle with the x-axis, so not exactly perfect, but now you see we have a right triangle. So the angle we're going to look at is this one, and that's because this is the angle that uh, this point or this entire line makes with the x-axis. So if we took the x-axis and then rotated it up a certain amount, actually if we rotated up this angle, then we would sort of produce this right triangle. The question is, wh what are the x and y coordinates of this point on the circle, assuming that here is uh, 0, and like I said, we'll have the radius be 1, but it turns out you can let the radius be anything. Um, what are the x and y coordinates of this point on the circle? So think a little carefully about what this is actually asking. It's asking if you travel a certain angle along a circle, how does your horizontal and vertical position change? So this may be, I don't know, about 40 degrees. So 40 degrees counterclockwise along a circle, where are you located? That's the question. So we're going to be able to answer that question using trigonometry. So I'm going to label this angle theta, which is just kind of an oval with a line in the middle. It's a commonly used Greek letter for angles. So remember that we decided that this being the unit circle, the radius is 1. So the hypotenuse of this triangle is actually just a, uh, a radius. It's just like the x-axis. Like I said earlier, you could rotate the x-axis and you get the that exact line. So therefore the length of that line is, is 1 in this case. Um, and that's because it's a radius and the circle is of radius 1. Okay, so now let's think about the trigonometry that we know. So we've labeled this x and y. I'm going to go ahead and label the triangle in the same fashion because x here, this, this leg of the triangle, just represents the horizontal uh, component of this triangle and since this is the origin it means that you move exactly x units over and you get where that point is on the circle. Same with the vertical segment. All I mean to say here is that the length of this leg of the triangle is the x-coordinate because that's simply how far you travel along the x-axis to get to that point. So we'd like to find x and y. Well here's the thing. Cosine of the angle theta so we know that's defined to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So you take any right triangle that has this angle as as one of the one of the two possible angles, and the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse side is the cosine of that angle. So here's a right triangle with that with that angle. The adjacent side for that angle, from the perspective of that angle, is x, and the hypotenuse is one. So any number divided by 1 you, is, is just, just that number. So cosine of theta is actually x, or x equals cosine theta. We can show a very similar thing for sine theta, since that's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the opposite side of this angle theta is y, and the hypotenuse is 1 because that's the radius, and we get y. So this is a pretty compelling result, actually. We get, um, through this, we've shown that x equals cosine of theta, y equals sine of theta. So now we have a way to locate points on, on the circle, on the unit circle. 
if you move a certain um, amount, a certain angle along the unit circle, then your position, assuming that the circle is um, centered at the origin and has a radius of 1, your position, your new position, is given by cosine of whatever angle you moved by and sine of whatever angle you moved by. So this is a pretty startling relationship because this gives us a way to directly find all the points on the unit circle. Because the, the way that a circle is defined is points that are all equidistant from one point. Because you see all the, all the points on this circle are equidistant, they're exactly one unit away from the origin, from the center. But that's kind of a difficult definition to work with. It's hard to plot where all the points are going to be. But once we've introduced cosine and sine, and assuming we can calculate cosine and sine of any angle, um, we can now map all the points on the unit circle. We can find out what they are for any given angle. So before we finish the lesson for today, I'd, I'd like to generalize this a little bit to a circle with any radius. So the radius doesn't have to be 1. Um, so in this case, instead of, writing one, instead of writing 1, I'll just write r. So how can we label the points on a circle of radius r instead of just radius 1? Well, it's a very small change to the original formula that we got. So um, let's just write again cosine of theta is going to be x over r. So you see x is the horizontal displacement. So that side is x. This side is y. x over r which gives pretty simply that x is, instead of just cosine, it's r times cosine of theta. Same with uh, the sine of theta is y over r, giving that y is r times sine of theta. So now, for a circle of any given radius, you can, you can map, you can find the coordinates of any point for any given angle just by multiplying the radius by the cosine of that angle and the radius times the sine of that angle. So that's it for today. I wanted to show that relationship between the trigonometric functions and the unit circle. It's a very key pivotal relationship and it has some great applications like if you were going to draw a circle, say in a, in a computer science sort of environment, you can simply calculate which pixels to fill in by taking cosine and sine of an angle and letting that angle go from 0 to 360 degrees. That's just one example of an application of these uh, of this relationship. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.